So believe it or not, this is actually my first video review of 2016. I know some of you are thinking, well, you just released those two Star Wars videos. That's true, but I wrote those back in December and then I got very sick and I wasn't able to film them. So this was actually supposed to be the first review of 2016. And now it's February. So it's kind of lackluster now, but I was gonna do this whole thing talking about how the show is five years old now and do some sort of celebration. So I bought this cake, which I would like to share with all of you, but I'm, I mean, I'm not cutting this into 50,000 slices and sending them all out, let's be, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. I'll cut it into 10 slices and then mail them out randomly. I also got this pizza, which is, what, one, two, three, eight slices? Okay, seven slices. That all adds up to about 17. So if you get one of these slices, consider yourself to be one of the lucky few. And don't sue me if by the time you get this, the food's rotten. That's not, that's not my fault. In fact, by watching this video, you agree that if you get one of these and you eat it and you get sick, you can't sue me. That's it, that's an agreement. That's gotta be legal, right? Also, some of you have asked if I have a Patreon account, so I started one. So if you wanna support the show, the link is in the description. Now this is going to sound weird, but the most interesting thing I found about this movie is just how uninteresting it manages to be. So how is that even possible? Well, I felt the movie actually had some good elements in it, but just managed to screw things up so horribly. The whole time I just kept thinking, how did they manage to make this so dull? Watching Fantastic Four is like, watching a professional runner start with a burst of speed only to trip and end up with a mouthful of dirt halfway through the race. Sure, it's sad, Maybe even a little funny. But you can't help but think, everything seemed to be in order. What went wrong? Well, a lot of things. Apparently there were a lot of disagreements between director Josh Trank and Fox throughout the production. Fox apparently went ahead and made a lot of alterations to the film without his supervision, went and did a bunch of reshoots as well. I mean, you know a film is in trouble when the day before the release, the director tweets out, a year ago I had a fantastic version of this, and it would have received great reviews. You'll probably never see it. That's reality though. Yeah, not exactly a ringing endorsement. Now if you're at all interested in this movie, my advice would be to skip the movie and just watch the trailer. Seriously, this movie wishes it was as good as this trailer. So the movie starts off with Reed and Ben in the fifth grade and Reed's coming up with a plan to build a teleporter. So I guess he steals the parts he needs from Ben's family's junkyard. And I guess this is how they become friends, which is good because I'm guessing from the first scene that Reed isn't really popular with his peers, which certainly would not be the case if this movie took place in 1997. Just look at that rig. How many N64s is he using to build this thing? I can't even see them all. 20 years ago, this kid would have been king of his neighborhood. King of the city, really. His birthday parties would need a queuing line with a velvet rope and a bouncer at the front door with a list, turning kids away. Especially those who didn't bring their controller and a copy of Mario Kart. It's a shame, really. This kid sees the processing power for a teleporter I see the potential for the greatest GoldenEye tournament of all time. If 12 year old Mark was in this scene, it would be a lot different. I'd be like, yeah, teleportation matter, whatever. Dude, we gotta get a bunch of TVs and start hooking all this shit up. Now one thought you may have watching this scene, maybe I wonder where this kid's family is during all of this. Well, don't worry because the script tries to do away with them in one line. So uh, who else lives here? Just me, mom and stepdad. They don't care about all this. They don't understand it. Hey, so how's your son Reed doing these days, Mrs. Richards? Oh, he's okay. Doing something in the garage, building some kind of machine with computers and electronics, something about the teleportation and matter. <laughs> you know, typical kid stuff. I don't understand it at all. 
So the teleporter causes a massive power outage and brings back some rocks and sand. And then I guess nothing really happened for seven years because Reed and Ben are now at a science fair and a high school gym. And I, I have to say, did no one take notice of this kid at all throughout these seven years? Not just after the power outage, which you'd think there would be some sort of investigation, but at school, in class, not one of his teachers blinked an eye. You'd think for an 11 year old to come up with the schematics to build a teleportation device, he would have to be some sort of genius, at least extremely gifted in the areas of physics or mathematics. I mean, I don't exactly remember my math homework from grade five, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't coming up with algorithms in an attempt to send matter to another location instantaneously. And now they've come up with a new version of their teleporter, which I guess Ben had a hand in somehow. Don't exactly know what though. I mean, seriously, what did he do? Seven years ago, Reed built the whole machine and all Ben did was hand him a Swiss army knife at the end. And here they are with Ben looking like he has no interest in this thing at all. Look at this. You know what he looks like? He looks like that kid in school who just complete slacker, never wanted to do any work, and only teamed up with the smart kids so that they would do all the work and he would get full marks, still. So Reed asks Ben to present the model car, which I'm assuming is what they've always used in their tests, but Ben didn't bring one. Damn it, Ben, you had one job. So they use some plane off another kid's display, which disappears and then comes back with a bunch of sand on it. Dr. Storm and Sue pop in and basically tell him he just created a machine that performs interdimensional travel because look, the plane has sand on it. We have some sand too. It looks the same, looks like sand. Therefore, it must be sand from another dimension. So I guess these people just go around to random science fairs looking for geniuses and they offer him a full scholarship Based on what? Your sand looks like our sand. Free ride all the way. Not, not, not his friend though, he looks poor. So Dr. Storm goes to get Victor Von Doom, who is currently living in an old warehouse or something. I don't know. And this is what I don't get. Why do they need Victor anyways? Someone else figured out your idea and made it work. So if someone took Victor's design and made it work, then why would they need Victor? He looks like he doesn't even want to be involved in the project anyways. He deserves another chance. He set fire to your data servers before he left. So he's an unpredictable person who came up with a defective design that someone else made work. Again, I'm confused as to why you need this person on the team. What does he bring except a shitty attitude, danger, and possible failure? Watching the characters interact together is just horrible. There's barely any chemistry at all. I would say it's like watching a couple of robots communicate to each other, but even they would have more personality than this. And it's funny how Doom is just a moody asshole for basically no reason. He feels like the high school bully in this thing. The only thing that's missing is a toothpick hanging out of his mouth. There's just no dimension to him at all. Like a lot of the other characters actually. At first when I saw this scene I thought maybe it was the lighting, but nope, that's a wig. I guess this was part of those reshoots we talked about. And it's gonna pop up multiple times in this thing. And I, I have to say, it looks terrible. So we have a big montage showing them building the teleporter with Reed taking a picture and sending it to Ben with the message, couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Well, why not? Yes, you could have. In fact, I'm pretty sure you did. Again, from what I've seen in this movie so far, Ben's contributions to this thing have been handing Reed the Swiss army knife and forgetting a piece of the demonstration for which he really couldn't look more uninterested. All right, here we go. Maybe we'll get some good dialogue here, develop the characters a little bit for once. Where were you born? Kosovo. Kosovo. You don't have an accent. I don't. <laughs> 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 so now the I don't know what he is he works for the government overseeing this whole thing but I'm just gonna call him gum guy and this is why I might sound like maybe I'm nitpicking here but there are several scenes in this movie where this guy is chewing gum like a madman and it drove me nuts it might sound weird but I found it incredibly distracting and if you don't believe me just look at this oh gum 
Oh yeah, let's go. Oh you. So let's just review with gum. Uh, gum everywhere. Mmm. Yeah, gum. Oh man. <laughs> That's really minty. Okay. So I can't do this. It's like you don't realize it's like clear. It's, We'll have control over more than that world. We'll have control over ours. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Gum Guy says that they're going to send astronauts in the teleporter, which honestly makes sense to me. But the super genius teenagers don't like that, so after getting drunk off a shot or two, Reed decides that they should go, right now, in the middle of the night. Yes, this sounds like a great idea. Let's send ourselves off to another dimension without anyone supervising the expedition. I'm sure nothing could go wrong there. I thought these people were supposed to be smart. So before they go, Reed, of course, has to convince Ben to come with them since they're best buddies or something, I guess. The plan was just to go to the other dimension, plant the flag and leave, but of course they get distracted by all the, I'm just gonna call this green energy. So they scale down a jagged wall because Doom wants to touch it. Again, I'm sure these are all exactly the decisions you want to be making in this situation. Hey, look at that stuff. It looks unlike anything we've ever seen before. I'm gonna go stick my hand right into it. So the place starts going crazy. Doom gets attacked by the goo. And now as the rest of them are trying to leave, this is when they get their powers. Suddenly flames come out of nowhere and light Johnny on fire. Don't really know where the fire came from though. It just kind of appears. We haven't seen any fire on the planet yet, so where did it come from? And Ben's door won't close, so he's attacked by a bunch of rocks. Seriously, look at this. The CGI is so bad. It looks like the rocks are water or something being splashed onto him. Then Sue gets them back and something explodes, and I guess this is what gives her her powers. They all find out they're freaks. Reed escapes and the rest are looked after by the government for a year. And for some reason no one can find Reed because he's hiding out in a shack in Panama. Somehow they can't manage to pinpoint his location because he's bouncing around his IP address to different satellites or something. Oh, I didn't realize he was an expert when it came to this stuff as well. So it's been a year and they still can't seem to find him until they give Sue the keyboard, hook up her iTunes, and in a few minutes She's seeing the patterns. What's that? Oh, that's her unique talent that she mentioned earlier on in the film. Has nothing really to do with what she contributed to the project, which was building the environmental suits. But it's a good thing they wrote it in because now she's able to find Reed in a few minutes. Hey look, I can see patterns too. It's called a pattern of bad continuity due to reshoots. First it was Sue's hair, and now with Reed's facial hair, he has some here, and then in the very next scene, it's gone completely. So they finally send a team to go back to the other world, and this is where they find Doom. Now, I see what they were going for with the idea that the suit fused to his body. I get it. But with a lot of things in this movie, I think it was an interesting idea. I'm just not a fan of the execution. They even tried to include Dr. Doom's traditional hooded cape, but I don't understand where it came from. The suit was fused to his body, so where did he get this fabric? Who knows, maybe it used to be the American flag that they brought, or maybe he just stole one of Lenny Kravitz's scarves. The third act represents a lot of what's wrong in this movie, and that's pacing. The whole movie feels like it's building up to something, and that something is the conflict with Doom, but Doom doesn't start presenting a threat until the last 20 minutes of the movie, and the confrontation with Doom is only about 10 minutes long. And of course, there is the agonizing scene where they're trying to come up with the name for their group. But at this point, it just feels so hollow. You've lost the audience so long ago with this incredibly disjointed mess of a story. This whole final act is so incredibly rushed, you just can't help but imagine how the studio hacked this thing apart. 
What was Josh Trank's original version of the movie? How much was it changed? In all honesty, Fantastic Four is far from the worst superhero movie I've ever seen, but it's one of the most disappointing. The reason is because there are some elements here that show some promise, but in the end, everything fell completely flat. From what I've seen online, Josh Trank had a very different vision of this film, and I'm curious as to what that was. Whether or not it would have had better writing, characters, dialogue, pacing, effects, I have no idea. But this is the version we have, so this is all I have to go by. Now please, Fox, let it go. We've done this again and again and again and again. It's over! But as we all know, nothing's over as long as there's still money to be made. However, I guess the well has finally run dry because Fox has recently removed the sequel to this film from their release schedule. Now by the time you're watching this, I'm probably going to be working on the next one. I'm going to Sydney, Australia, and I'm going to try and actually work on writing this show uh, as I fly down there. Because it's like 20 hours. Rest assured, I'm going to have a lot of material by the time I get back. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go mail out these slices of pizza and cake. Um, I, wa I, I wasted a lot of food in this episode. Look, Victor. You're here on this planet now. So, we want to help you. Bigger. For this. What do I know about mailing pizza? What do I know about mailing pizza? That's, a, that's an agreement. That's got to be legal, right? Not even close. Well, then I'll just tell them that. How many of them are really going to know? And edit this part out, too. Otherwise, I'm f***.